Hello guys, Spazzy W here, uh, bringing you a little interview, first interview I've ever done actually. I'm here with Dustin, say hello Dustin. What's up? This guy is making a badass, very immersive mod for Fallout 4, we'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, this interview is going to be brought to you today by SugarBomb.com, the place for your 100% daily value of gaming. Um, so, before I take all these questions and all that good stuff... Dustin, why don't you go ahead and give us like a little synopsis of uh, what you're doing with this mod. Alright, so uh, said 163 years after the Great War. Uh, we wanted it to kind of take place during the events of Fallout 2. We have some cool like things that's going to tie in with this kind of stories that was going on in Fallout 2. Because I, I was a much bigger fan of those games, so I always liked the stories of the, the West Coast Wasteland a lot more. I was always a much bigger fan of like the stuff uh, Black Isle Studios was always doing. We always wanted the story, like, to make sure that the stories uh, didn't really have that Bethesda twist to it. Um, so, like, what I'm meaning by that is Bethesda is a great developer, and I love him to death because of the modding tools. But it's like there is definitely like a uh, a lack of choice, I want to say, for like their newer games. Definitely. Uh, so, like. Fallout 4 just did not have the kind of choices that we were looking at. And another thing, we were talking about this before we started. Uh, like, I always wanted to sh uh, some kind of lore about, like, what Ohio was. Because, I mean, I'm from Ohio. I've always wanted to see what an Ohio wasteland would kind of look like. And there's, I mean, there's no lore, no established anything. And we actually have a pretty funny story of, like, how we, we got... I sat down and started, like, writing what this would kind of be and then once i had a pretty rough of the story uh we played a pen and paper version of it oh really my friends yeah oh that's old school get, man yeah we we went real old school to try and uh like i guess finite some of the details yeah so with the story that i had it was pretty much it was there but there was a lot of chunks that were missing and by us playing that it allowed me to get a lot of gaps and like think of like what actual players would do and do a lot of stuff that helped it in the long run so i'm glad we did that now we're we're looking at this i mean the story's practically finished now and now it's pretty much just us getting ready to start porting the hype maps in and uh getting to work on the wasteland that sounds awesome dude um it's always it's always good to look back at the older fallouts because uh uh, you know, uh, Todd Howard's doing great, uh, but uh, man, Tim Kaine, he he made some Fallout games. They they were they were just amazing. Um, and the first, actually, the first question that was asked from uh, Quinn Quinn Ross, they said lore friendly, which I guess uh, since you're kind of you said you're going to kind of intertwine with Fallout too, so I guess you're trying so to. Go ahead. Yeah, with the lore-friendly aspect of it is, like like I said, there had never been any established lore for Ohio. I think there might have been some nods here and there about Toronto, which could be Toronto from Ohio, or it could be Toronto from Canada. Or, I mean, there's a lot of areas that could have been. Right. So no one really knew what they were talking about, and there hasn't really been any kind of, like, the closest we've ever been to Ohio is Pittsburgh in Fallout 3. Yeah. And that's still not that close. Um, so, like... I just took it upon myself to do what the other Fallout games did, which is kind of look at history and what really made a state, like what the, the state is really known for and everything like that. And Ohio's the birthplace of uh, aviation, which that gets our name from. Uh, so that's what we wanted to focus on is making sure like the history was right and we made sure that like we're not doing anything that's over the top, like crazy, stupid um, we, we don't want to add, like, giant-ass robots controlled by super mutants or anything like that. I mean, we're, we're right. sticking very close to the established lore and making sure we don't try to tread on any other, uh, parts well, of that, it. Well, that, um, see, one of the things about Fallout 4, whenever they first showed off, um, the Nuka-Cola bottles in Fallout 4, how they have the little fins at the end... Uh, mm -hmm. People were immediately complaining about how those weren't lore, how those wasn't lore friendly, because uh, the nuka bottles have always been made the same way. It's just it's just weird how uh, there's certain things about lore that people see, and that was like a certain thing that we were looking at. Um, 
if you check our Twitter page, you can see a little bit of the stuff we're doing. Uh, like the vault suit that we're working on is a complete redesign of like oh, what you've seen before. That thing, that thing looks sick, man. Yeah, I love it. We wanted to, we wanted to really try and redesign a lot of the stuff because, not that we don't like where it came from and everything like that. We have complete and utter respect for like what the style of the stuff is. We just wanted to make sure that what we're doing isn't just giving you a new area with the same assets. So, I mean, right. even down to, like, the Nuka-Cola bottles, we were actually going to try and, like, model the original, like, Fallout Nuka-Cola bottles um, back into the game and stuff like that. Because, I mean, again, just back what you said, that that, that kind of turned people... I personally liked the design of them, but, I mean, I also liked the Coca-Cola, uh, like, Coca-Cola-styled bottles. Well, I like the I like the rocket style, too, because it fits with the, mm -hmm. with the 50s dystopia. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this isn't a question, but I'm super curious. Uh, tell me a little bit about Vault 72. All right, so Vault 72, that's another like thing we completely created from the ground up. Uh, so don't know if there's going to be any other vaults, uh, but we know specifically that like there's never been a Vault 72, so we were able to use it in Ohio. Not that that has ever like been established in lore, so we don't know where a Vault 72 would be located if there was one. Right. Um, so it's pretty much us just creating it. Um, and Vault 72, it's same as pretty much any other vault you've ever had. It's uh, It's got its dark secrets, um, but I can't really say anything else about it. It's a pretty big vault. It's got two main halls. We've got the actual schematic of it on uh, our Twitter page where you can actually look at the entire layout of oh, the Oh, yeah, vault. I saw it. It, uh, it says, uh, let me look at it. Oh, it says, uh, like, your room... Uh, yeah, yeah, the overseer office and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's another one of the. Uh, it's another one that uses a um, an elevator that lowers you down into it. So it's not one that you walk into a cave. Oh, okay. Uh, this elevator is located in a swampy area that's Ooh. actually kind of near where I'm actually located. Um, and yeah, it was pretty much just created from the ground. I can't really say anything else about it because right, that right. would be kind of giving away the story, but uh, yeah, completely new vault made from the ground up. Well, that's uh, that's really cool that like you were saying, it's actually close to where you're at. I mean, it's cool that you can like take a game world and just like adapt it to your real life and kind of put yourself in the game in a way. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, man, I'm just, I'm loving mods. I'm loving mods. <laughs> I can't wait to build a PC and become part of the PC Master Race, and there you go. Oh, oh, here's the one. Here's a here's the one you're gonna love. Um, the let me get this name right. The Low Cal Zone Zone. The Lone Cal Cal Zone Zone. Oh, that's a great name. Anyways, will the mod be available on consoles as long as the storage space increases, which they have confirmed that it will eventually. So I guess again, go ahead. That's all. Yeah, again, that's like all an if situation. I mean, they they have said that they are going to try to increase the space of it, um, but whether that is how large, we still don't know yet. I mean, with the kind of scale that we're going on, I mean, this mod could be upwards to about the size or a little bit under of what Fallout 4's download size was, which is around twenty something gigs. So I mean. We could possibly be looking at 19 gigs, 20 gigs, <laughs> something wow. around that. So that's a that's a lot of work, man. Yeah. Oh, okay. That uh, I guess that brings me to the next question. Um, uh, new map or are you are you building? So go ahead. We haven't uh, showed the map yet, but okay. we do have a working concept of like how large our map is, um, and it is a completely new map. Uh, I mean, it's in Ohio, so. <laughs> Uh, it's a completely new map. It's in the... Uh, a lot of people I did see in the questions were asking um, where in Ohio it was kind of located. Yeah. Um, so it's located in the uh, Miami Valley type of area. Uh, very southern Ohio. Um, close to Dayton. Stuff like that. So yeah. It's going to be a completely new area that's going to span... Uh, uh, I think the targeted like mileage was like 14 miles. Oh, okay. Is like um, how large it is. So how, how how would you access it from Fallout 4? Okay, so that is actually where it becomes different. So there is a mod, it's called uh, Fallout Project Brazil. It did this. So when you start Fallout New Vegas, 
um, when you, the Project Brazil mod is installed, you are allowed to either choose to start the Fallout New Vegas game, or you're allowed to start Project Brazil. And that's how ours is going to work. You're going to boot the game up, and instead of playing the Fallout 4 story, you will literally be prompted to play Aviation. And then you can play Aviation, and it will literally start you all over. You make a brand new character for it. It's a completely new story that's separate. We have our own separate voice actors for this story. Okay. So we're not even using the same voice actor from... Which, that'd be tough to do. Um, but, yeah, we got a completely new voice actor for the male character. We're still looking for our female lead. So if anyone out there is into voice acting at all, uh, shoot us up an email uh, with some of your... Uh, what do you call it? A little bit of a little bit of a experience. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of experience there. Uh, I don't mean mm. I do a pretty good girl voice. If you want to, <laughs> maybe, maybe later I can let you know, let you hear that one. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, I'll definitely. Oh, the next question was from Living Home Alone, which said, "Also, will the NPCs be voiced?" So I guess I guess they would if you're doing a full voiced uh, protagonist. So yeah, as of right now, we've got our male lead, and we're looking for our female lead, and at the moment. Our plan is to release the game with just the main characters voiced, and then over time we'll start adding voiced lines for the NPC. So at first, the game may release with no voice actors for any other person. Okay. But over time, we'll start implementing them into the game. Okay. Well, hey man, if you uh, you ever need somebody with a southern accent, uh, you there know, we go. I'm Noah guy. <laughs> um, w- from. A qu- this question's from Baldem Ohak. He said, "Was it challenging making the faces for all of the characters? I guess all the NPCs." So we haven't actually got started on that yet. Oh, um, we're pretty like, I guess as it comes to like in terms with mods, we're pretty early on. We've been working on it for quite a while though. Like I've had this project going for about a year now. Um, but like my philosophy in getting it going and everything was to make sure that absolutely everything was ready to go when we started making the world i didn't want to have to look back and go like guys we need to make more quests we need to do something like that i want everything to be ready to go so we can just implement it after the game world's put in the next question's from not sure what to name myself this is (laughs) super (laughs) super creative um well you've already you've already talked about the vault suits but they asked uh different weapons armor etc so uh definitely new armor um, the Brotherhood of Steel that you are possibly going to be coming into contact with in this mod uh, will not be the Brotherhood that you've met before. It will be the Midwestern Brotherhood, which are a vastly different type of force than the ones you've seen before. They were in Fallout Tactics a bit. Fallout Tactics isn't te- necessarily, I think, lore-friendly anymore. I think they've canceled a lot of the stuff that made that lore-friendly. Yeah. But um, we're definitely... Uh, trying to make sure like the midwestern brotherhood are the the full force here we don't want the ones that have already been shown off right and like a lot of people have a uh, a lot of different feelings about the different you know brotherhoods mm-hmm. oh yeah uh, you know everybody thinks some of them are assholes some of them are pretty yeah. pretty cool guys like elder lines had a had a pretty cool little setup over there in the capital wasteland and new weapons uh we're definitely looking at new weapons um, probably putting a lot of the ones that were in Fallout 3 probably back into the game. Chinese assault rifles, um, assault rifle, all the just the, the regular type of weapons that Bethesda took out. Um, yeah. We're trying to put in a lot of them back into the wasteland and stuff like that. We have designed some new ones. Uh, there's a pretty funny power fist that you might be able to find. Oh my Won't god. say anything else than that. But Man, I love my power fist and uh, melee weapons. Hey, I want to I want a uh... I want to, ch- I want to, um, uh, what they called it, the man opener from uh, the pit, but I want it to have a, a plane propeller on it. That, that's what I want. That is interesting. Yeah, that'd be. You might have to look into that. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the one, uh, the one we've designed, I can say it doesn't have a blade on it, but uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty wacky. So. <laughs> Oh man, you gotta bring back that uh, that Chinese pistol so everybody can complain about it. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> First um, pistol they hand you. So you were talking about the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, is there any other factions that we might recognize that will be showing so, up in the mod? Yes. Biggest thing is, I'm a huge fan of the Enclave. 
massive fan of them. You would I be. Loved, <laughs> I love them. That's why I said it in the air, like in the time frame that it's in, is because it's around Fallout 2, so it's before their collapse. Oh, okay. Everything. So this is when the Enclave were in full force, and they were a force to be reckoned with across the wasteland. Um, so they are going to be a very, very prominent faction in this. And we also have added a ton of new factions into the game. We've got uh, Raider Faction, known as the Arrows, which are a tribal group of Raiders. We've got Trappers, which, funny thing, Bethesda actually added Trappers in their Far Harbor DLC, and that was like... We didn't even know they were going to add, like, a new faction called Trappers, but, like, they used it in Far Harbor, so we might change the name for ours. Oh, that's funny. Uh, just to not, yeah. Um, then we have our two bigger factions. We've got the Gym City Coalition, which is a group of super mutants that operate out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, can't say anything more to them because they are, they are definitely spoiler material. Um, okay. And then we've got... Uh, frontiersmen of the new age or new world we don't know what the the name we're exactly going to be calling them yet but the cool thing is this faction is really unique and i i feel like it definitely works with the fallout universe really well so a frontiersman was sent to kind of document like what the world was kind of like when we first got here okay. so what this group of frontiersmen are is they're a bunch of super mutants that have pretty much been alive before uh ever since like the great war um, and they have started on the East Coast, and they have traveled all, they're traveling all the way to the West Coast and documenting everything about the New World. Okay, so, uh, kind of how, kind of like how Fallout in the past has made play on, uh, historical moments and historical figures, you're kind of, exactly. kind of doing the same thing, kind of like what they did with the Minutemen? Definitely. Uh, okay, so. Except ours aren't going to be, uh... Ours aren't going to be um, characters that are always bitching at you to go do settlements. They are oh, definitely, yeah. uh, they are yeah. definitely a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> um, so, uh, radio. I want to ask you about radio because okay, obvious, yeah. obvious radio is a it's big deal to most people, and it's always been a big thing about Fallout is the cool radio, the cool tunes, and the uh, the cool per- personalities. Uh, so, what, what do you have going on radio wise? So. We have, on our Twitter, you can look at our Spotify playlist, which is our Victory Radio. Victory Radio is going to be the radio station that's in Ohio. It's going to be a uh, new DJ. Haven't really found him yet, but I've got a pretty funny idea of what this one's... He's not going to be a Travis from Fallout 4, I can at least say that. He's oh, definitely going to be more of like Everybody a three-dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely going to be more like a three-dog, always wisecracking and stuff like that. Um, but he, he controls this place called Victory Radio, and... If you go to our Spotify playlist, you can hear a couple of the songs that we're actually going to be using at our radio station. Awesome, man. Uh, as long as you got Butcher Pete, I'm down, man. I love so Butcher we don't, Pete. <laughs> we don't know if we have that one yet. Um, um, I don't want to like really reuse, because that was like the biggest thing with Fallout 4 that people complained about is a lot of reusing of songs. So we wanted to actually do completely new things. Uh, as long as you don't put in Johnny Guitar, I think we're all everything will be good, man. Because yeah, well, no Johnny Guitar, <laughs> no Johnny you Guitar. Got that out of the way. Like Johnny Guitar, one song, then you play Johnny Guitar twice, and then I just make a Johnny Guitar radio. Just the whole thing. It's just that's what that's what we need to mod for Johnny Guitar radio. That's so I don't know if this is like fake or anything. I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. No, that's cool. But I don't know if this is fake. Someone added like a New Vegas radio into Fallout Four. And I was like, ooh, this is this is awesome. I get to listen to the new Vegas songs in Fallout 4. So I install it, and it repeatedly plays Johnny Guitar. And I don't know if he was, like, serious. Like, I don't know if the mod just failed to install properly, or if he made a mod that literally, <laughs> like, just replayed Johnny Guitar because that's all the Fallout New Vegas radio station did. <laughs> I don't know, but that might be the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god. Um, so, uh, I'm looking at your Twitter and you have a picture and it says uh, the name is Elias Maguire? Maguire? Yes. Is that, a, is that going to be a reoccurring character? So Elias Maguire is Elias, one okay. of the... Yeah, Elias Maguire is one of our uh, um, vault dwellers who end up going missing. So, okay. I have, we haven't and revealed it, the other two yet, but that is that is one of them. 
So in the mod, you're the Voyager, and you're looking for three of your vault dwellers, fellow vault dwellers that that's gone missing. Yeah. And this is one of our dudes. I like his glasses. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's pretty much the uh, the smart, uh, uh, not really good with a gun kind of guy. He's just there to kind of be the negotiator of sorts. So he's a uh, he's kind of like a middleman. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So earlier you're talking about the frontiersman. Uh, yes. And you got I see you got some con- this, some concept art of uh, the ghouls. Yeah. Or this uh is, is this ghoul holding a musket? Yeah. Okay. Um, they are uh, the biggest thing with them is they they appreciate uh, their pre-war traditional values. So they don't use a lot of energy weapons, anything like that. They use a lot of ammo and uh, just actual pre-war made weaponry. Which makes them a fighting force for raiders, so they're pretty they're pretty scary when it comes to like a group of raiders, like, oh shit. But when it comes to a group like the Enclave, they don't really pay them much attention. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause en- Enclave's, uh, Enclave's locked oh, yeah. and loaded. Oh yeah. Uh well I don't I don't really have any more questions uh is there anything else that you'd want to say about your mod maybe to get people uh get people super hyped oh I do have another question uh do you have a ballpark release month or anything like that as of right now and I know a lot of people say this it's it's completely up in the air because the way it works is we get so many people that come through and they help us for a bit and then a lot of them leave and a lot of them come on and it's like we're making steady progress and then we go back to making slow progress and i understand i understand at uh at best and i know this is probably going to hurt a lot of people at best i'd probably say next year (laughs) okay probably when we'll 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 start uh getting more stuff but another thing that we do want to try and i don't know if this is completely going to be happening or not um we do have a a smaller mod plan um for fallout 4 this is an actual fallout 4 mod that is going to kind of give you a little bit of the story to aviation and we're going to release that before it so people can get to play this this mod that's going to tie into aviation in a way Um, okay so a little bit of answer a little taste a little taste before you jump before we jump all in Oh yeah, cool, cool, man. Um, do you have like a um, any kind of uh, GoFundMe or or something like that set up to uh, maybe help things get going a little bit better? Mm, no, we're uh, we're pretty much just doing it all out of a uh, a voluntary work for um, just the love of Fallout. Okay, man. Well, I can respect that. And then pretty much what I want to say to the people is. If you have any experience whatsoever, just send us an email with uh, some of the uh, some of the reference stuff you've done, and just uh, let us check it out. And we'd love to have people on board. Definitely, I'll leave a full article from SugarBomb.com, and so everybody can read up on that. And uh, I'll also leave a link to the Spotify stuff, your Twitter, all that good stuff. And uh, man, I. I I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, even even if it is a ways off, it's it's going to be super interesting. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I want to also just give uh, the other guys a shout-out quick, too. Um, there's a uh, there's a Fallout group called Fallout Cascadia. Um, they are working on their mod for Seattle, and I'm just trying to get everyone to uh, kind of check us all out because uh, at the end of the day, it's all for the fans, and that's what we do it for. And then there's a uh, another guy um, or another team that's working on a Fallout mod that takes place in uh, Wyoming. It's called the uh, Rise of the Great Carnate. Ooh, so, that I, that's one I actually hadn't heard of. Oh yeah, so oh, they're good. pretty far. They're all pretty far along. Um, or I wouldn't say pretty far along. I don't want to try and like say how far they are in their development process but they've at least actually started building their worlds they're farther than us let's say that okay. <laughs> <laughs> well um i'll leave all the links in the description below uh dustin i really appreciate you coming on man it all is, right no it's, problem it's been awesome oh hey guys what's up uh you know what 
I'm glad you're still here. If you wouldn't mind, maybe you could like check out this video over here and maybe even hit like or subscribe if you're new. That'd be cool, you know? I don't get enough love on Twitter. Will y'all please just come say something to me? Even if it's like, hey Spazzy, you ruined my life. Why are you alive? I'll say something back, I promise. Come on, just, just like me. Like me. Like me! Dance for views, if that's what I gotta do, I'll dance for views. Alright, this is just getting pathetic. Uh, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and end this right now.